I look forward to our chats every week so much. I know that lots of you have already found that little subscribe button right down here. Uh, make sure that you're subscribed, please. I really appreciate it. And if you're new, just check it out and click on the subscribe button. It's totally free. And right beside it, there's a little bell uh, so that you will hear everything that I think I need to share. I want to tell you a story about me and my journey. So let's go back 55 years. Yep, I'm 55. For the first six months or so of my life, I didn't have a weight problem. I know that sounds crazy, right? But I have been overweight since I was about six months old. Even as an infant, I was chubby. When I was in grade school, starting from kindergarten on, I was usually the only fat kid in the class. And I wasn't really fat. I was a chubby kid, but I was definitely overweight. And yes, I got made fun of. And yes, it hurt my feelings. And yes, it had a profound effect on me. And yes, to this day, it still hurts. It's true, I'm a bit of a tender heart, but I'm not different from other people. Their feelings get hurt too. Countless times, I would be standing in a fast food restaurant with my husband, children, friends, family, and I was the only one there that was extremely obese. And I would be wondering how many people are staring at me as an adult, I have always been the largest person in the room at any family event. Well, at least until recently. So what incredible epiphany did I have that convinced me to start living a ketogenic lifestyle? What was it in the air that day? What was it in my mind, in my heart, that made me do something that was nutritionally upside down from everything I had ever been taught? Something that makes this even more of a mystery? is that I absolutely love to cook. I made my own bread, pizza dough, biscuits, cookies, cakes. I made my own pasta, lasagna noodles, linguine, fettuccine, spaghetti. I even made my own macaroni. I loved hosting family get-togethers at my house where I would spend days hand painting chocolates and making pies and squares or at Halloween making scary or really gross cookies and gross casseroles for our annual Halloween party. And as much as I loved creating the food that truly was my art, I loved eating it just as much. So why was I willing to give up all of that to eat bacon and cheese? Oh, come on. You didn't really think that's all there was to keto, did you? I still make bread. Yes, even yeast bread. I found an amazing yeast bread recipe. And I have a wonderful 90-second keto bread recipe for the microwave that's a favorite in our house. And I still make pizza crust. Only now I make it out of cauliflower or ground chicken. And I use lots of delicious toppings on it, but none of them are processed food anymore. I still make cookies and cakes, but now I use almond flour or coconut flour. And I still enjoy food every bit as much as I ever did. But now I enjoy food that is not harming my body. So back to the big question. Why did I do it? The reality is 350 pounds is not easy to walk around carrying every day. And that's what I was doing all day, every day. The reality is that when a five-year-old little child in Walmart asked me if I had a baby in my tummy, I had to blink back the tears when I walked away. The reality is when I looked in the mirror, I saw nothing attractive about my body and I couldn't imagine that even my husband would see anything attractive about me. But as hard as it was to live in my skin, here's another reality. I had the nerve to look at someone else who was morbidly obese, maybe standing in a fast food restaurant that I was in, and I would pass judgment, even though they were 50, 75, maybe 100 pounds lighter than I was. And at the same time, I was sitting there eating the same fast food that I was silently criticizing them for eating. How messed up is that? And you know what? There were people sitting in that same restaurant looking at me thinking, that lady needs to eat a salad, not a burger. And I'll tell you something, they were wrong. There was nothing wrong with the burger. It was the bun that was the problem. You know, in my 
55 years, I have heard people, not very many, mind you, but I have heard people on TV that are morbidly obese that will say, I love my body just the way it is. They'll shout it from the rooftops that they don't want to lose weight. They don't need to lose weight. They love their body just the way it is. I'm here to tell you, those people are lying to themselves and to the other people they're speaking to. They are lying to hide the pain and hopelessness that they feel. When a person is not all right with their weight, and I can tell you, I was not all right with my weight. So this, this keto thing, was a last ditch effort to lose weight and still be able to maybe have a few of the foods that I really enjoyed. I'm here to tell you that there is something that can be done about it. And it doesn't involve potions and powders and pills. And it doesn't involve surgeries. It doesn't involve banding your stomach. It involves real whole food. Now, I don't want you to take my word for it. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a medical professional. But what I do want you to do is to keep tuning in with me every week so I can share more about the keto lifestyle with you. But what I also want you to do is to read and listen to people like Dr. Ken Berry, Dr. Ben Bickman, Ivor Cummins, Nina Teichold, Gary Tobbs, these are people that have spent their career trying to help other people be healthy. These people and so many others have looked at, researched, investigated, collaborated, and written about keto and all of the benefits of living a low-carb life. This is just a small handful of experts that are out there. People that are engineers, scientific journalists, doctors, and scientists that that are looking at what we are eating and the effect that it's having on our body. And while I appreciate everything that I have learned from all of these people and many, many others, what I can tell you from my own personal experience is this. Keto works. The weight comes off. The type 2 diabetes, it's gone. The depression and anxiety, they no longer plague me. And the chronic pain that I had in my lower back for 15 years or more. The chronic pain that had me taking six to eight extra strength ibuprofen most days, yep, you guessed it, it's gone too. Yeah, no kidding, it's gone. So do I need to see all the data from all the scientists to prove that keto works? Well, I did. When I started doing keto, I needed all the information I could get. And I did over a thousand hours research on my own to understand what keto was and why it works. And while I was doing that research so that I could be sure I was doing something that was not going to wreck my health even more than my weight was, while I was doing that research, my body was confirming every single thing that I heard and read about keto being the answer. My body was confirming every single thing that these experts had to say. And by the way, I'm still morbidly obese. That's the category with my BMI. I'm down 123 pounds, but I am still in the morbidly obese category. And now I look at other people that are suffering with morbid obesity, and instead of judging them, I just want to help them. Please share this video with anyone that you know that struggles with their weight. I just want them to see this message so I can offer them some hope, so I can tell them that there is something out there that can be done. But more than anything, I just want to tell them, it's not your fault. It's never been your fault. But there is something that you can do to fix it. I love living this shining life, and I want you to live this shining life in the healthiest way possible. Thank you for joining me. I'm Sharon Mack. And I'll see you next time.
day you began what was coming to you, coming to you, yeah. I told myself to just let it go, sit back and relax, just enjoy the show. Don't waste your time, cause you will find a good 